Hey, I'm Claire. Welcome back to Belly Melon Farm. We are a family of seven. We are gardening and farming in Taranaki, New Zealand. Today I'm going to share with you um, an exciting project that uh, we've been working on today. I'm really excited about it so I thought you guys might be excited about it too. We've been working on our trellising for our tomatoes today. So we have tried in the past a few different types of trellising methods. This year we needed to move our tomatoes completely because uh, we suffered from really bad blight uh, in our tomatoes last year. I think I probably planted over a hundred tomatoes and we were lucky to get enough for fresh eating over the season as well as like half a bag of frozen tomatoes. So it's really important to us this year that we do it right and that we get a really good crop of tomatoes and I'm hoping that we're going to have enough for us to eat fresh, enough for us to make all of our um, preserved tomatoes that we need in the form of like canned tomatoes and things like that. Um, I want to be able to like experiment with start some types of things that I haven't tried before. Um, I haven't done salsa before. It's not... Um, a, like a super common thing here um, and I want to be able to try some like sauces and passata and a whole lot of different types um, of preserved tomatoes. Uh, so the other thing we're trying to do this year is um, we're trialing some veggie boxes here on the farm so I'd like to have um, enough tomatoes to be able to go in those as well. So we have got here, um, we've made five rows. So I've worked out that I can fit about 12 tomatoes per row. Oh, there's bugs everywhere. Um, in the past, we have tried trellising using wooden posts with hurricane wire. Um, in between, we found that it sagged really easily with the weight of the tomatoes. Um, that's how we grew our tomatoes for the last three years because it was what we had um, We had already set it up. It took us a while to set it up. So we just used it um, This time because our tomatoes were so terrible We decided to move them to a completely different spot and We have also decided to try um, a new method of trellising We've also tried trellising with just stakes and um, were like bamboo stakes. We've also tried trellising with um, like concrete reinforcing mesh. Um, the reason we didn't like the concrete reinforcing mesh is we found that because it was kind of like a solid um, kind of structure that it was almost like a wall in the garden. So anything, um, it just kind of um, didn't make the garden flow really nicely. So we've gone this time with um, Waratahs, so our waratahs I think were 2.6 meters tall and wires between the posts so we've got five wires along the waratahs so I'll show you now. So we've got these five wooden posts at the end here and then we've got the waratahs in between. Um, so some places call these T posts or Y posts um, and then the wire, each wire just oops. Each wire just goes through each um, of the T-posts and then at the end here we just have it strained to this um, old shed uh, at the back of the garden here. So Lance and I are quite short so um, so if I, I'll show you me walking under it. Um, so I'm 5'2", which I think is like 160-ish centimetres tall. Um, so, you know, it's not that far above my head. Lance is probably not that much, you know, probably about that much taller than me. So, um, for our open day with visitors coming, I think we're going to have to put um, something on there so you can see it. Because I think otherwise, yeah, so I think otherwise you're going to be able to um, knock your head on it if you don't know that it's there. Um, growing and planting tomatoes is one of my favorite things to do. We're growing um, a ton of different varieties. I think it's about 42 different varieties this year. Um, 
and I always say that I'm going to focus on like the sauce varieties of tomatoes like the ox hearts and the romas and things like that but then I just can't help um you know with all the cherry tomatoes and just planting like a ton of them so we're growing like red cherry um red pear and yellow pear um we're growing um black cherry uh golden nugget um i think we have some like indigo um i think it's like an indigo rose maybe um so yeah tons of different varieties which i will go through with you probably as the plants get a little bit bigger but yeah i can't help like thinking oh those ones are gonna look really really great in the garden um and so like i've planned where i've put them based on like what they're gonna look like as you walk into the garden and you know what they'll look like um paired together with the one next to them and things like that so i really love a beautiful garden and i just can't help it so you know um we'll be able to use them all we will um you know hopefully we'll be able to sell tons of cherry tomatoes and hopefully you know the ones that we aren't able to sell I've got a sauce press so I'm going to be able to use whatever tomatoes we have and just put them through the press anyway and that gets rid of all the lots of the liquid so yeah uh, I think for me I think kind of sacrificing the practicality of of that for the beauty is important to me so yeah I'll um, show you where I've got the tomatoes planted so far so I've done a row of cherry tomatoes um, I'm just getting ready to plant like a row of slicer like beef steaky kind of tomatoes um, so that's like I've got big rainbow and black from Tula and black cream I've got Cherokee purple um, and then I've got things like pink brandywine and bloody butcher um, red Russian and things like that so um, I will show you the ones I've planted and then I'm going to show you how I plant the next row um, so that'll be nice and cool uh, when I grabbed the camera it was looking like it was going to rain it was starting to become a bit overcast and I'm sure I felt a few drops and now the sun's come out in full force I'm looking to find little shady places where I can hide um, to film <laughs> so um, I'm going to show you the first row of tomatoes they're all cherry varieties and I'll just go through and tell you um, the varieties so this is the um, way we come into the garden so the ones, the tomatoes that I've put on this side, I really wanted them to like look really cool. So the ones I've put on the end here um, uh, are kind of like the ones I was most excited about growing. So on the end here I've put the red pear and the yellow pear. And yeah, I think they'll just look really cool together. So then I've done um, a black cherry. I really tried to spread them out so I don't have like, uh, you know, two red ones together or kind of two similar ones together. It's not perfect though, so we'll see. Sweet 100 there. Um, sunrise bumblebee. That's the indigo roseberry. Um, what are you? Oh, so this one is a bit of a gamble because this is... Um, a heritage cherry from Kwanga Seeds so this could either be a so the heritage cherry could either be a yellow pear a black cherry a I think it's like an orange cherry and a red cherry so that one's a bit of a gamble um, with what it will come out like. So we'll, we will have to wait and see, which is kind of exciting as well. That, is a, that one is a Fantastico. So that's just like a red cherry, a honeybee. That's a yellow cherry with a red pear and a gold nugget. Golden nugget, another black cherry, another sunrise bumblebee. Then there's another yellow pear, a tommy toe, which is kind of a bigger cherry tomato, 
and another honeybee. I'm just gonna plant this row and I'm gonna put you on a time lapse. Um, it's probably gonna take me a while. So I'm going to um, use the blowtorch to burn all the holes in the plastic. And then I'm gonna use the drill to dig the holes so it's nice and fast. Um, so that should help me get them planted nice and fast because we've still got three rows to do tonight and it's almost, I think it's five, must be about 5.30ish. So I would need to get in to uh, cook dinner as well. So um, time lapse it is. And yeah, this is how I plant our tomatoes. trouble with is um, the blowtorch so I um, used the blowtorch when I did the plastic in the holes for all the strawberries and it went really really well uh, and I'm not sure why it's not working um, so we we did get a new gas canister for it um, and it just seems to be like puffing you like you can see the gas coming out and it's kind of like every time I um, you're supposed, it says on the instructions you're supposed to use it upright um, but like I said I used it on all the strawberries and that went really really well so I'm not I love hearing the chickens so um, I'm not sure what the problem is here um, but Lance helped me and we managed to get two more rows done with the holes burnt holes in the plastic and um, with him just I would do the hole and then pass it to him and he'd relight it and then we'd do another hole and then he'd relight it so it was a real nuisance but we got two out of the three left to go which is all good um, I will do those two uh, I just had to run and get a new battery so <laughs> um, I think I was saying that I will try and plant these two tonight and I'll just leave the other one for whenever. Uh, now my next problem is um, all my sauce tomatoes. So on this one that I picked up doesn't look that bad. Um, so all of my like ox hearts and um, my Amish pastes are terrible. They, yeah, they all look really, really bad. So they are the ones that I started first I think that's why I'm having problems with them. They've just been in their little pots for too long and, you know, they probably are just not happy. So I'm hoping that if I plant them, they'll be okay. But I also don't want to plant like two rows of them and then like they all do awfully. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to plant two rows of them. But then I'm going to keep, I think it's 16, yeah, so it's 16. So I'm going to keep 16, 32 um, extra tomatoes just in case. So 32 extra ones that I'm not going to sell just in case these ones just carry on doing really awfully and don't sort of thrive after I've planted them. So I'll leave them like a a week maybe a little bit longer and just see how they go um but yeah that's what i'm going to do now i'll just flip the camera around and show you how bad they all look um and i think it's like that um you know that a few of them probably look really really bad and they're making the rest of them look extra bad um that's what i'm hoping it is and i'll just kind of go through and pick the worst ones i mean the best ones i'll go through and pick the best ones to plant um and yeah hopefully i can find enough good ones i need 32 so i'm sure out of like the hundreds and hundreds that i have that i'm gonna have 32 good ones so i'm gonna do that now 
Um, and then when I've planted the whole lot, um, I'll show you what that's all looking like. Um, also, the drill that I've been using to dig the holes has been working really, really well. And um, the only trouble that I've had with it so far is that if you hit a rock or something, um, you have to hold it really steady with two hands um, because if you hit a rock, it just kind of goes and it like really wrenches your wrist. So, um, yeah, if you haven't tried that before and you have one or you're thinking of trying it, just be really careful of that. Um, and yeah, because there was a, quite a few rocks in there, so I just had to kind of go slowly and make sure that I was really um, holding it really firmly. So these are the tomatoes I'm going to plant. I've got some of the varieties. I've got um, a heritage sauce and oxhow and oxheart dalmatian. They're both from Kwanga Seeds. Um, I've got San Mazzano and Albenga Oxheart in there as well as Amish Paste. Uh, and then these ones are all uh, Andiamo and Gross Lease. So yeah, I will search through these and find the best ones. And then they're all going to go in those two rows. Okay, so this one here is just an example when I've got where I've got stuck on something and you can see that it just wants to turn. So if I'm not careful it's gonna like swing my arm all the way around. So it's just reverse it and pull it out. Um and then unreverse it. So yeah, there's a rock in there. But yeah, I managed to kind of move it out of the way enough and um, get that hole kind of the right size. Okay, so that is all the holes dug down these two rows. Um, so we've put our rows one and a half meters apart. So we've got a ton of space to walk down them. So I'll show you in some of the holes, they go pretty deep. For tomatoes, oh, yeah, they're nice. They sort of make nice, like, round holes, which are really cool. So with our tomato trellises, we have got enough room here for 80 um, tomato plants. I've put the plants, I don't know, like 40 centimeters apart-ish, I think. About, probably about 40 centimeters apart. So I've got, um, 16 in each row and five rows um, we've put one and a half meters um, space to walk down the paths that is just because as they eventually grow bigger and as much as I try and be perfect I'm not so usually at some time in the season you kind of get a bit overwhelmed and you stop pruning them um, and stuff like that so our last row, I think they might have been like a meter or 800 apart. It was just too close together and like when the garden was in full swing you just couldn't walk down the path so it was like, you know, it got to the point well what's the point of pruning because I can't even get down the paths anyway and then you know, then you had to get them down them anyway to try and pick stuff. So yeah, we went for the bigger space because um, we wanted it not to feel like too enclosed um, and we also just wanted to make sure we had enough space to move about this area. Um, I've yet to decide whether I will plant anything other than um, just tomatoes here. I did think like I could put um, a few pumpkins on the end that may be able to sprawl out onto the track. Uh, we might find that annoying that they get in the way but um, the track, the only um, thing we use the track for is to get here to feed Tammy so um, and she is going to be weaned shortly anyway so uh, we might find that that goes okay otherwise I might just chuck in like a few cosmos or things like that at the end of, end of the post um, to make it look pretty. Uh, but I think it's going to look great anyway, just with um, the tomatoes. Um, because we've got so many um, different varieties, I think it's just going to look really great anyway, just with tomatoes. 
So now I'm going to plant all those ugly sauce tomatoes. Um, so two rows of those. Uh, and yeah, then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with the last one. I might just like chuck in stuff that I really would like some more of or um, I've just got so many nice looking plants, you know. So I might just chuck in some ones that are looking really nice in that last row and just have that as a bit of a, a hodgepodge. Um, but yeah, we'll see when I get to that one what I decide because I do kind of like, um, I don't know, I like all the cherries together and all the other ones together and then all the slicer ones together, all the sauce ones together. But then I like, you're looking at me, Tammy. Um, but then I like it also, yeah, to, so like the rows of cherries, I like to have it looking nice and mixed and stuff like that. But I don't know how much I like a hodgepodge of different, of different ones. So we'll see what I decide to do for that last one. But yeah, once I have planted the, all the sauce tomatoes in, I'll show you hopefully not how awful they're looking but hopefully they might look better when they're planted I'll just um, try and take off most of the yellowy leaves and plant them quite deep uh, and hopefully that'll make them nice and happy okay so this next row took a lot of sorting out so I just had to go through each of the plants and find the ones that were looking okay so the way I've done it is to keep four varieties together where I had four good looking ones so the varieties I have um how about I walk you down the um rows and show you so these first four are Island Bay Italians they're from Koanga Seeds um the next two so there's two there so those two are San Mizano. then I've got four Heritage Sauce those are from Koanga and so are the ox heart dalmatian so I've got four of those and then I had a space at the end for my one Amish paste that was looking okay uh, and then the albinga ox hearts are all looking the best so I just chucked another one at the end there then in the next row here um, I'm going to put the albinga ox heart then the soprano then I've got what are these ones? Another. Okay, the right way. Oh, Andiamo. Yep. So then I've got four Andiamo and then four gross leaves. And that is it. As I was looking around all my plants, I actually found quite a few that I still want to plant. So um, out of those, I will just have to try and find my 16 favourite. And that might just have to be that last row is um yeah my favorite ones i'm gonna get planting on these rows now and then it will be time for me to go home and start cooking dinner um yeah it's really exciting to get some tomatoes in the ground the weather is just supposed to be fine now um 10 day forecast was really good we had a few cold nights so i've just waited until those passed so we are the 31st of october currently yeah, exciting. I just looked at my phone and it is 10 to 7, so I'm going to go home and um, start cooking dinner so we don't have another really late night. So, um, yeah, when I finish planting, I'll give you a little tour of what it looks like. But, yeah, it's exciting to have tomatoes in the ground. So, they're the first ones to go outside. I've done some flowers and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting to have tomatoes in the ground. So it's about two weeks later from when I filmed the first part of this video. I just never got around to um, editing it, but it's actually worked out quite well because now I can show you an update of how those tomatoes are looking that I planted in the first part of the video. Um, obviously you've just watched it, but they were pretty terrible and I was thinking that I was going to have to pull them out but I just want to show them to you now because I think they're looking really really good. So all the tomatoes have really greened up. Uh, this is the row of cherry tomatoes so these ones weren't very bad in the first place but they are all looking really really good. 
So these ones weren't looking too bad either, but they've all grown. Grow, yeah, they're all growing quite well. Uh, and then over here, so these are the ones that were yellow and terrible. So they're just looking amazing. So that's a San Mazzano. Um, these ones, so that's, these are all Island Bay Italian. So I'm really, really pleased with how they're looking. So yeah, these were pretty much, I just left them in the pots and they were a bit neglected. Uh, so just, you know, they just really needed to get into the ground. So I'm super pleased with how they're all looking. And I still haven't got around to planting this last row. Um, it's on my list of jobs to do. And the ones that I've still got in pots, like I've got some, um, I've got some down here and they look terrible. So I don't think, I don't think I'm going to plant these ones. Um, but I have some other ones that are still in pots uh, and I'm sure they're going to be fine once I plant them. Actually, some of them, since they've been outside, um, I think the rain really helps uh, instead of you know, being watered, they're just being rained on. Um, and I think that really helps make them look all nice and green. So I'm really happy with how that's all turned out and I will um, do some updates on these uh, in the garden tours when they're getting a bit bigger. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with them. Um, so I've just popped into the greenhouse to um, show you how the tomatoes are going in here. And then I just thought uh, I would show you how I'm going to prune my tomatoes because uh, you may have noticed I plant them really, really close. Um, I tend to let them go to one or two litres, which I'll show you what that means in a minute if you don't know. Um, and yeah, I'll show you how I prune them for anyone that doesn't know what that means. Um, and also you don't have to prune them. Um, I'm pruning them in the greenhouse um, so they get better airflow. Also so I can reach um, all the fruit and they're not too bushy. And um, I'm also planting the ones outside close together for the same reason. So just for better airflow. It probably does reduce the amount of um, tomatoes you get on the plant. If you just let them bush out. And I always do just a few that I let just grow naturally because it's it's kind of fun and if I've got extra tomatoes or space I want to fill um, I can just chuck them in the ground and I don't have to worry about pruning them. Um, so you can see here this one's quite bushy. I haven't been in here since before we had our open day which is about almost two weeks ago now so I just haven't got around to pruning any of them or tying them up so that's what today's job is. Um, so when I prune it you can see um, the main stem along here and I'm pretty much going to prune off um, all the laterals so a lateral is um, a branch that grows between the main stem and the leaf branch and I'm just going to go up the plant and chop all of those off so that's another one down the bottom so most of the time they're kind of this size uh, or even smaller but because um, this plant has got quite big, it's got quite big laterals. I'm also just chopping off all the lower leaves for um, better airflow in the greenhouse. And so I just go all the way up the plant. So you can see in here, so that's a little one, so you can just pinch the little ones off. And so that's what it looks like when it is all finished and um, so we just while we're in here doing jobs i just whoops that's right. <laughs> while we're in here i thought i would just um show you how we'd tie our tomatoes up in the greenhouse so i've just got um, one of these staples and some bailing twine that we had around um and i just remember i'm gonna be too short to reach that one um so I've just tied that around and I'm going to put it at the base of the plant. And then I'm going to go up to the wire that I can't reach, kind of, um, <laughs> to get the right length. So I just need to get a ladder. I know Lance is going to do it. Um, so I go up and over the wire and then 
I do a slip knot around the string um, because then you can um, move it up and down. So I'm hoping that as the tomatoes get bigger, I can lower them down, lower the stem down. Um, and so then it, they have more room to grow at the top. So that is the plan. Try and carefully, well it's easier when they're little and if you did it regularly, but this one is big. So then I just weave it around The, um, the string. This is a gap. Yep, so I just weave it around the string and then I can um, pull this to tighten it and it straightens the plant up. Yeah, that's how we um, string our tomatoes up in the greenhouse. So because I've waited to prune these so late, there's some that have kind of developed to main leaders so you can see here one's going this way and one's going this way so i've just tied another string onto the main string and then you can see come up here with two strings um i just thought of another couple things about tomatoes um so not all tomatoes need to be pruned so there are tomatoes uh, that are indeterminate and tomatoes that are determinate. So an indeterminate tomato means that they are going to just keep growing and growing and growing and if you let them grow forever, if you could, they would just keep um, producing fruit so they're just going to keep growing. Um, so those are the ones you want to prune because you know you want to be able to have the airflow and things like that in those ones. Um, you also don't have to prune them. So if you have the space and you're not worried about it, you can just let them bush out and grow however big they grow. Um, you can also like prune them to one or two liters or three or whatever. So um, pretty much just your personal preference. Um, I'm doing one in the greenhouse. So the other one is determinate tomatoes. So a tomato like a Roma is a determinate tomato. That means that the plant is going to grow to a certain size and set a determined amount of fruit. A Roma is an example of that where you just leave it and it bushes out. It grows all of its fruit at once um, and then it's finished. Um, so I'll just show you how what I do with the determinate tomatoes like the Roma. So here I've got four Roma tomatoes uh, and they are just in a little bit of a cage. They don't grow super tall so you don't need to trellis them the same way you would uh, an indeterminate tomato. So I've just got them in these cages. I've only done one so far, so I've got three other plants that need doing. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's all for now. I will probably be doing a garden tour um, in November. Um, things are just jumping out of the ground. Um, I will let you know in the garden tour what's going really well and what's not going well. Like always, there's um, you know crops that don't work as well as others. But anyway, that is all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.